we continue in the Bible study, God's love plan for us. Praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Your word never comes back void, but it accomplishes that which you have sent it for. Lord, we thank you for your word. It is flawless. It endures forever. We will not be ashamed of your word at any time, Lord. But we will revere your word at all times in Jesus' name. Lord, grant us listening ears tonight and an open heart to receive your word. Your word gives light to us. Thank you for the light that will come with your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that we have freely come here without any hindrances. So many countries, you cannot come without a hindrance. But we have come of our own free will. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have made it possible for us to be here. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Your great love for us. We welcome the ministry of your Holy Spirit yes. here, Lord. And we welcome the spirit of just men made holy in the name of Jesus. We cover this building with the blood of Jesus. And we cover everybody in this building with the blood of Jesus. Let every evil pass over in Jesus' name. We thank you for what your blood has accomplished in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight we are going to be talking about divine dignity, perpetual peace, dependable direction, hearty health, productive prosperity, constant companionship, and accomplished achievement. Praise the Lord. And this study is by T.L. Osborne. It was he who put this together himself and his wife and that brought thousands and thousands of souls into the kingdom praise the lord through their crusades they got married very young 18 and 19 i think but it did not stop them from doing god's work straight away the men went on mission work after they got married so he wants to enumerate for us the seven fundamental blessings which the death of Christ has already paid for. All of them are for you from the moment you believe in God's big love plan. You wouldn't be here if you didn't believe in God's big love plan for you. He starts off, the Lord our righteousness. We are no longer condemned by our own resentment or jealousy and guilt. God's love plan transfers to our account the righteousness and dignity of the greatest life ever lived, that of Jesus Christ and his new life becomes ours. It's transferred to our account. If someone's transferred something to your account in the bank, it's yours, isn't it? Yes. Praise the Lord. We are no longer under the sentence of death because of our sins. Can we put up Romans 6 verse 23, please? Up on the, on the board. Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. That's eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. Then he tells us, the Lord is our righteousness. God has credited the righteousness of his son to our account. We can now have his life and his nature. Can we put up 2 Corinthians 5.21, please? The Bible tells us we have no righteousness of our own. It's like 50 rags. But we have put on the righteousness of Christ because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin to, uh, for us. Uh, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We have become the righteousness of God. In other words, we're in right standing with God. We're in right standing with God. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. If we believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our personal sins, we have to believe that. We have to believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our personal sins. Put up 1 Peter 2.24, please. One Peter two verse twenty four. 
who himself bore our sins, as Jesus, in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. We were healed when Jesus died on the cross. So we can claim our healing at any time. We have been healed. It's, it's past. We have been healed. We, we ask the Lord for the manifestation of this healing to come into our lives if we are sick. That it, that, that it be manifested in our lives. That it be seen that we are healed in our lives. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Now, perpetual peace. He writes two paragraphs on this. We are no longer living in torment with ourselves, out of harmony with family and friends. We are no longer transferring these mental anguishes to our own bodies, to our businesses or to our environment. We are no longer ruining our own health and happiness by their poison. God's love plan changes us and transfers his peace, tranquility and harmony to us and makes us new persons. So when you gave your life to Jesus, when you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and accepted everything that he did on the cross, you know, um, you, you became a new person. You became a new person. The old person was gone, and you became a new person. So God's love plan changes us, and his peace and his tranquility and harmony to us makes us new persons. The old person is gone. What you were before, what you grew up, you know, before you knew Jesus as your personal saviour, before you repented of your sins and handed over your life. We are no longer guilty or tormented by our sins and transgressions. We no longer fear God and dread judgment. Jesus Christ assumed all judgment for our sins and there is nothing now against us when we believe in God's big love plan. Can we put up uh, Isaiah 1 verse 18, please. We are no longer guilty or tormented by our sins. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Praise the Lord. So that's exactly what happened when you repented of your sins. When you told Jesus, look, forgive me. I'm sorry for the past life. I'm sorry for all the transgressions, all the things I've done. I am sorry. And you repented and you turned to a new way. You said you will not look back. You will not look back. So you gave your life. So your sins are wiped away, wiped away. You had a clean slate. We started off with a clean slate. Praise his holy name. And each day we continue with a clean slate because any sin of the day we bring before him straight away. We don't go to bed with that sin. Every day we repent if we fall short of grace that day. If we fall short and don't obey God or do what he has commanded us. And it's a very important thing to examine yourself every day, every day. Because many times we slip, even in our attitude to others, you know, and the way we treat others, you know, the, the, very small ways that displeases God. Small things that displease him. You know, your attitude to one another. We should love one another as Jesus loves us. Our attitude. God sees our heart. He sees it already anyway. He's already seen it. He sees it every day. Every minute of every day he sees our heart. But he does not hold us against us when we come and we ask for his mercy and his forgiveness to be washed clean every day. Praise his holy name. The Lord is our peace. He bore our judgment and suffered the punishment for all of our sins. Put up Isaiah, please, 53, verse 4. 4 to 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5, uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. It's not you might be healed. You are healed. We are ready. We have received the healing. 
We have received the healing. We are healed. Praise the Lord. We know, we know, we have read about the passion. We know exactly what Jesus suffered. He suffered greatly. He suffered greatly. You know that before ever he was nailed up on the cross, he endured a scourging at the pillar. Whipped. Whipped. His whole body whipped. Made like raw meat. Whipped. And he endured that. And the type of whips that there was pieces of bone and leather and pieces of glass tied to the ends of it. So it took out chunks of flesh every time he received the blow. And two soldiers whipping him from either side. Well, right coming in towards his belly. So there was none of it. He was like raw meat. And then a cloak put on over that. Well, and he bleeding. And then that cloak had to be removed before he went up on the cross. You can imagine something that stuck to your body being whipped off. All that he did for your sins. That's, that's the love plan of God. That great love. He was crowned with thorns, bruised into his head. Can imagine the agony? Imagine his whole face swelling up, his eyes swelling up, the blood flowing into his eyes. He couldn't hardly see where he was going. Fell down three times. You can imagine the roads weren't tarmacked at the time. Imagine lumps of gravel into his knees, all, all seared. Then nailed down with heavy nails. And hung up there to die for hours and hours and hours for our sins. So that we could have eternal life in heaven. That our sins could be forgiven. That our sicknesses and our diseases be healed. And everything be made right. That we could become a new creature in him. What compassion, what love. And not alone as he was dying, slow death. His lungs filled with fluid. His breathing got more shallow and more shallow. And he was able to cry out for forgiveness. Father, forgive them. Those who've done that, they know not what to do. Imagine yourself in that condition. You'd be thinking of self, self, self. Jesus was thinking of you and me. The whole world. He was thinking of the whole world. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Praise you, Lord. He thought of his own mother and he handed over his mother to be cared for by John. The thief on the cross. One made fun of him. The other admitted his wrongdoing. And he was able to tell him that this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is what Jesus endured for us. This was the love plan of God. And he was forsaken by his father. Forsaken by his father. Because Father, Son, and Spirit are one. Forsaken by his Father. That was the worst of all. And the sins of the whole world came upon him. The sins of the past, the present, and the future sins. Look at the world as it is. All the sinfulness. All the sinfulness that's there. All the slaying of innocent babies in the womb. All the murders, the suicides. The robbery, the, the mistrust, misdeeds, the hacking of bodies. He saw all that. Every sickness that was ever mentioned, sicknesses that we don't even know about yet. He endured those on the cross. He endured the pain of the cross. Pain. He endured pain. Pain. So by his stripes we are healed. And by his blood we've been set free. We've been set free from every condemnation. We've been set free. We're set free from our guilt and our shame. He done all that for you. And if you were the only person, he would have done it for you. When we were small, we used to say, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. But we never took it personally. He died for everyone. A, a, just a big phrase. But start thinking, he'd done it for me. 
He done it for me. And he done it for those men in prison today. He done it for those murderers that are in prison today. For those who are robbing the old and breaking into their homes. He done it for them too. For the ungodly as we see them now. That's the compassion of Jesus. That's the compassion of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then on the third day he rose so that we could have new life in him. That we could have that new life, the newness of life that's in him. So we're living in the new life this day. We're living in the new life that Jesus gave us. And when he died on the cross, he secured a place for us. He gave us eternal life. He gave us eternal life. Life forever with him. He secured eternal life. We are justified by what he'd done. Just as if we had never sinned. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then we know that he, he promised the Holy Spirit to the apostles. And he delivered on that. He promised to send them a comforter when he left. And he delivered on that. And that same Holy Spirit is living within us. We are the temple. It's living within us. That Holy Spirit that gives us encouragement and comfort and guidance. And illuminates every part of God's word to us. Everything we need, we can ask the Holy Spirit. All the giftings that the Holy Spirit has given us and the talents that we've been given. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is interceding for you right now at this time. Right now he's interceding for everyone here. He intercedes on our behalf before the throne of God. We thank you. We thank you. The Lord is our peace. He bore our judgment and suffered the punishment for all our sins. Since no penalty can be paid twice, we can be free and saved. We can have peace. We can be well as soon as we only believe in his love plan. So we must believe. So praise God that we have become born again of the Spirit of God. And we believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Lord of our life. He's the Savior. He saved us from eternal damnation. He's our Savior. We've been saved from eternal damnation. Because the wages of sin, we showed it up there, is death. Eternal death. But we have gained eternal life by giving our life to Jesus, by, because of what Jesus has done. Um, the Lord, our shepherd. We are no longer going on in confusion, making wrong decisions, stumbling into failure and every conceivable trap of defeat. God's love plan gives us direction and guidance in life so that we will enjoy success, health, prosperity and fulfillment. So that's what God wants for you. He wants success in your life. He wants guidance in your life. And he wants you to be healthy and to be prosperous and to be fulfilled in life, to be fulfilled in life. Not wandering to and fro, not knowing whether you're coming or going. He wants you to be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're a woman, he wants you to be fulfilled by, by giving birth. And if you're a student, he wants you to be fulfilled by passing your exams and doing the courses that you want. In the man, he wants you to be a successful husband and the father of children, you know, to, and to be a good, a good provider for your family. So praise the Lord. He directs our paths. Uh, we are no longer deceived and perplexed, confused and misguided. The Lord is our shepherd, and we, you, we all know that psalm. I don't think there's any need. I think everyone knows that. The Lord is my shepherd. He, we shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. You know, we say it every Sunday here. So um, he's our guide, and he's our director. He takes control of our lives. When we follow him, we are on the right road. The good shepherd gave his life for the sheep to show us the way. Now, we look to him and hear his voice and follow him in, in his ways of, and of health and success and abundance. Put up John 10, verse 27 to 28, please. And he said that his sheep know his voice and they follow him. 
we are his sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Praise God. And when I was in Israel, I saw that. I saw the shepherds and, you know, they just walked in front of the sheep and they just followed along after them. You know, if they wanted to lead them to another field or that, they, they just followed them along. And um, it's different here. We, we drive cattle. We go behind them. But sheep will follow you. To this day, sheep will follow you. You know, I know they have sheep dogs and all those sort of things now. But the farmer that hasn't oceans and oceans of sheep, the few he has, they will follow him because they know him. They know his ways, you know. And um, I grew up in a farm and I know that, you know, when my father would be going with hay and that you would see the cattle all lining up and following him, you know. And, and, and they know where they're going to be fed. So they just follow him. So they know him and they trust him. They trust him that he's going to let down that thing from the, from the tractor and, and, and feed them. So it's, we trust God. So, you know, we know his voice. Praise the Lord. We, we hear, we, we, we go his way. Praise the Lord. And he's our physician. You know, he gives us hearty health. He's our physician. We are no longer subjecting ourselves to disease and sickness, living vulnerable to every physical plague that ravages human beings. God's love plan includes his abundant miracles of power to heal us, not only of diseases and allergies but, and infirmities, but also to keep us in health, physically fit and with long life. The end of the psalm says, well, long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. You know, he wants us to have long life and to be physically fit, you know, and that depends on you. You know, if you keep sitting on your couch and eating loads of potatoes and sweets and that, you won't be physically fit. You know, you must take care of your body because it's a temple of the Holy Spirit, you know, and you must be fit to, to do your work as a housewife or as a, a working man or whatever it may be. You know, but you must be fit. Uh, to get on the school bus. You must be fit to carry your bag to school and carry it back. So you, you can't be, be uh, neglecting your body or abusing your body in any way, taking alcohol and drugs and all these things that are harmful to your body. Um, Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 5. No, put up Matthew 8, verse 17. Matthew 8, verse 17, please. That it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So I'm after explaining that, that what he'd done on the cross. But it's confirmed that hundreds of years beforehand that the prophet Isaiah spoke those words. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It was foretold. Jesus' coming was foretold. Jesus' suffering on the cross was foretold. Um, he bore our sicknesses and he suffered our pains and carried our infirmities since there were ours and he did it in our place by his sufferings we are healed so while you read a book even about miracles you can be healed because of the faith you have as you as you read that book in what it says you know when you start reading scriptures you know, and your faith becomes strong. You can be healed as you read. So that's why it's important to read God's word because it's like medicine to you. You know, it's like food to you. It does everything good in your body. Everything good in your body when you start reading God's word. So if you haven't been reading God's word, I'd encourage you every day to read God's word. Read a portion of God's word every day. Underline the things that stick out to you. You know, and the Holy Spirit will give you a revelation of those things as you read it over and over again. You know, and uh, you'll be familiar with these scriptures. And one day you might just be here in the church and suddenly you'll have new revelation on some scripture. What that exactly means and what it means in your life. Sometimes we apply scriptures to other people's lives, but we don't think, how does that apply to my life? Personally, to me, to me. Um, the Lord is our provider. That's the next heading. We are no longer believing in poverty and want. 
We are no longer victims of circumstances. We are no longer living our lives on a hand-to-mouth basis. God's love plan includes all of the wealth of this world. He created it and placed it here for our blessing and prosperity. So we take him into personal partnership for life. Not for a day, not for a week, or try it for a year. We take him into personal partnership for life. For life. We are no longer the slaves of poverty, or the slaves of lack, or material privation. Christ put aside all of his riches and became poor for us, so that, we, that he might redeem us from want and impart to us his riches. All the riches that Christ has, he's given them to us. He's given to us. All the riches and in, in glorious inheritance that we have is his and ours. Now, we share his unlimited supply. Put up John 10.10, 10, please. So we can enjoy his plenty. John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Abundant life is not sickness or not always in poverty. That's not abundant life. He's come that you might have everything you need for life and godliness. That's what he has come for, that we might have everything we need for not greedy, not greed, but everything we need for life and godliness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, we can be very greedy, so we have to watch our greed too. We have to keep control on that. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So abundant life. When you're living in health and, and prosperity, that's abundant life. When you're living as a wife and a mother should, and as a husband should, and as a child should, and a student should. That's, that's abundant life, abundant life. When you're thankful to God for everything, when you're thankful to God that you're awake this morning, when you're thankful to God that you can see and you can hear and you can walk, you can talk, you can taste your food, you can smell your food, you can digest your food, you can dress yourself, you can run, you can jump, all these things. That's abundant life, abundant life. When you look around and if you only sit on a, a chair in, 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 in the hallways of, of the the shopping centres, and you watch people, you know, 10 people in 10 minutes, you could see them with a limp or a short leg or something like that, somebody that has had a stroke, somebody, you know, there's so much. Thank God that you're healthy and well every day. Because if you start sitting down and observing, you know, you will see many things to pray for. You will see many things to pray for in those five minutes if you're waiting for someone or that in a shopping centre or anywhere you go. You will see many things to pray. So thank God that you were able to get out of bed this morning. You know, you're able to dress yourself. No one has to feed you. You're able to put stuff into your mouth yourself. You're able to walk. You're able to tie your shoelaces. So many can't do that. They have to wear floppy slippers because there's no one to tie their shoes and they just slip on slippers and, you know, which are probably not comfortable. They're dragging them along because they're just not able to stoop down. So thank God that you're walking in health. That you're walking in health. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So enjoy his plenty. Enjoy his plenty. The Lord is our provider. Through his love plan, he enters our lives and shares with us his abundant living. The Lord is our present friend. He's your friend. We sing that hymn, we call you friend. We call you friend. We are no longer lonely and fearful, discouraged and depressed. God's love plan includes his guarantee to become our companion. He actually lives in us and with us as our personal friend. We now know only the success, happiness, health and prosperity that is assured when God is our partner. So God is your partner from the day you invited him into your life and repented of your sins and made him your Lord and made him your saviour. We are no longer walking life's road alone. We are not, no longer forsaken and lonely, unvalued and unloved. To remember that you're deeply loved. You're deeply loved. The love of God, it passes knowledge. It passes human knowledge. It, that's how much you're loved. 
It's almost impossible to know how much you're loved. But you're loved, you're loved, you're loved. He has lavished his love, he says on us. Lavished it. That means he hasn't spared it. He has lavished his love upon us. When you're lavished with gifts, it's many gifts, isn't it? They're not sparing the, or, 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 you know, penny picked. They're lavished. They're, they're, they're plentiful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we, we look at Isaiah 41 verse 10. So you're very valuable. You're unique. No one has that finger mark but you. My finger mark is different to yours. He planned you long before time began and called you by name. And when time was right, he decided to plant you in his mother's womb, in your mother's womb and bring you forth. But he had thought about you long before that. So that's your cherished and your valuable. You're very valuable. Don't let the enemy tell you that you're not loved or who could love me? You know, look at me. What gifts have I? This is what the devil tells you. What are you doing in society? Do you make any impact? Do you make any difference? He starts picking and picking at you like that. And you begin to believe it. You begin to believe it. You're a tool in God's hand, very precious to him and very valuable to him. Very valuable. He has no hands but yours. No mouth but yours. You're his mouthpiece. You're God's mouthpiece. That's how valuable you are. Praise his holy name. How valuable you are. Glory to God. And he's your present friend. His love plan guarantees his presence with us. The Lord pledges himself to be with us always. By our side in us. He's always with us. Can we put up Proverbs 18, verse 24, please? Proverbs 18, 24. A man who is friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Your brother is very close to you. Most brothers in the Christian families are close to one another. You know, we have out in, in the other families out there, you know, that don't know the Lord, there's something there isn't closeness. But he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's how close a friend he is. Sticks closer than a brother. So you would confide in your brother, wouldn't you? Especially a younger brother will confide in an older brother. So we can trust our brother Jesus. We can trust him to confide in him in every way. In all situations, every circumstances, praise his holy name. Could we put up Colossians uh, 1 verse 27, please? To them, to them God willed to make known that what are the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord shine upon you. Let the glory of the Lord shine out from you. Wherever you go, you carry his presence. The glory of the Lord is with you. Praise, let him radiate that glory out onto others. Out onto the community in Ennis. Out into County Clare. Out into all of the land all along our coastland and wherever we go to work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You, you carry his presence. You know that the people in, in the apostles' days, when Peter walked along, even when his shadow touched the people, the glory of the Lord was so great in him that the, his shadow, they were healed when they came into his shadow. Hallelujah. Be mindful of that as you go along. You're not poor old me. You're a life-carrying person. You carry life for others. You carry life for others. And you're the tool that God will use. So don't be ashamed. 
Don't be ashamed and think you don't know anything. Be present as you go along. If you don't want to pray with people and that and you're shy and you haven't got used to it yet, you just be aware that the glory of the Lord is all around you and you carry his presence and the demons are fleeing when they see you coming. And you're praying along for that man there and that woman there and that child there, you know, and that person who gave you the dirty look. You're praying for him too. Okay. So, you know, use every opportunity. Use every opportunity. When you know who you are in Christ, you must know who you are in Christ and what value God has on you. What value God has on you and how he can use you to win souls. How he can use you to further his kingdom here on earth. We know that the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. And as we had last week, we are the generation to harvest this harvest at this time. The next generation will, will harvest the harvest of their generation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so on and so on as it has been, as it is, and as it is coming. Praise the Lord. We don't any, want anyone to be lost. You know, you're so excited when you gave your life to Jesus and you saw the change in you and you saw everything that Jesus had done. You want others to know it. You want others to know it. You can't wait to tell others. You feel shortchanged that someone didn't tell you years beforehand. You feel a sort of cheated that this good news was here all the time and no one told me. That's how the people out there, when they hear the good news, will think. That's how I felt. Why didn't, this is very simple. Why didn't anyone tell me all them years? I'm trying to be good and trying to be good and trying to be good for years and years and years and years and never reaching the target. That's not the way it is. He says, come, all you that are heavily laden and burdened, come, an invitation and a promise, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And if you are never to say anything else as you're evangelizing, that's enough to draw someone, that they can come as they are. The relief in them, that they can come as they are, and he'll tidy them up. The Holy Spirit will start enlightening them and showing them their sinfulness, and the wicked ways, and they will forsake those and give their life to Jesus. It's very simple when they know that, that, that he says, come as you are. Because most of the people out there, and I know it from growing up in Ireland, are trying to be good and to have a better relationship with God. But it's the cart before the horse. It's the wrong way around. It's come and I will do it. He starts spring cleaning you. You know, and you'll be shining before any length. You'll be shining before any length. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's our present friend. The Lord pledges himself to be with us always by our side in us. He died to put away our sins so that we could be, he could be our personal friend and walk with us again, hand in hand, throughout this life and throughout eternity. God, the Lord is our victory. We are no longer trying and failing in life. We are no longer lacking accomplishment and devoid of success. God's love plan makes us a constant winner because he is on our team. You're a winner. Do you remember our Reverend Chin where she had um, um, winner man, winner man, winner man, winner man, you know, and how the most beautiful thing, you know, and she believed what she sang. She believed she was a winner man, a winner man, winner all the time. So he's on our team. That's why we win, because he's on our team. You know, when you're picked at school, don't you always want the good players to be on your team? And sometimes it doesn't happen. If the teacher starts picking and she calls from here and here and you come, you stand there and you don't know. Oh, I'm on her team. Mm, she's not great. Mm, he's not great. You know, but we know we're on the winning team. We're on the winning team. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We discovered the good life with the guarantee of God's abundance and success. We shall never spend our days drinking the dredges of leftovers. Success, accomplishment and achievement are built into our very natures. And we are God's created human persons with dignity and with honour. We have dignity and we have honour because we belong to him. We are dignified because of him, because of him and who he is and who we are in him. 
Praise the Lord. We are no longer enslaved by defeat or failure. Say, I'm not a failure. I'm a winner. Because Christ is in me. The hope of glory. Praise the Lord. I am no longer held captive by evil. Or by the works of Satan. Amen. The Lord is our victory. He died to destroy the works of the devil. So we put up um, put up Matthew 28, 18 to 20. He arose from the dead with the proclamation, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And lo, I am with you. Sometimes? Always. Sometimes? Always. Sometimes? Always. always. Yes, you've got it. Always. I am with you always, in the good times and in the bad times. He's always with you. Lo, I am with you always. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to him. Praise the Lord. And he has given us power and authority over all the works of the enemy. We have been given power and authority over all the works of the enemy. Praise his holy name. So we don't realize what God has entrusted to us. What God has entrusted to us. Praise his holy name. We are entrusted with so much. So when do the seven blessings which Christ paid for you become yours? It's when you realize them in your own life. From the moment you decide to relate with what Jesus Christ did in his death for you and on the cross. From the moment you believe that he assumed the judgment for our sins in your name and in your place. When you do that, you will begin to experience the miracle of his love plan at work in you. There are some of the things that will take place in your life and on your behalf. Number one, the righteousness of Christ will be transferred to you and you will be free of all guilt and judgment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you are the righteousness of Christ. You are the righteousness. He says we have no righteousness of our own. We're just like filthy rags. Jesus, number two, Jesus Christ will come and live the life of God in you and through you. He will live the life of God in you and through you. So be mindful that we're living the life of God every day as we go out to tell others as we do our jobs or whatever is our responsibility in life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, you will become a new creation. We know that we are a new creation because the old is gone. The day we gave our life to Jesus and repented, the old life was gone. He gave us a new heart that day. A heart that is able to love. A heart that is full of compassion. A mind that is Christ-centered. And he gave us his Holy Spirit and he put his Holy Spirit in us. So he empowered us. He empowered us with his Holy Spirit. We received power. And the Holy Spirit came upon us. We were empowered. You're a new creation. Number four. You will be restored to God with dignity and honor according to his original love plan. That's the original love plan he had for Adam and Eve, you know. So we are restored with dignity and honor because of what Jesus done on the cross. Because of what he done on the cross. Number five, a supernatural power will be given to you, which will make you a child of God. It will be a miracle. So the day that you gave your life to Jesus was a miracle. It was nothing you could do of yourself, was it? It was God given to you. It was God given to you. It was the Holy Spirit who convicted you that you need to repent and that you needed to give your life to God. So you were set free on that day. You were no longer a slave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number five, a supernatural power will be given to you which will make you a child of God. It will, it will be a miracle. God op Christ opened the way for God to come to you and 
for you to come to him. He is your link with God, your way to the good life, your way to the good life. Praise God. Jesus is your way. That's why he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I am the way to the Father. There's no other way. There's no other way. No religion will get you to heaven. No religion. No religion will get you to heaven. It's a relationship. It's when you hand over your life to, to God, to Jesus, and ask him to forgive you your sins. That's, that's when everything becomes new. That's when everything becomes new. So that's when the good life commences. Praise the Lord. Uh, treasures of faith. Here are several Bible verses that you will now understand and will remember to, and will want to remember as treasures of faith. So, this man, T.L. Osborne, he has uh, individualized them or personalized them for you. And he takes Romans 5, verse 1, and he says, Now, since you have been made right in God's sight by faith in his promise, you can have real peace with him because of what Jesus has done for you. Ask yourself, am I experiencing that peace? And if you're not, you say, Lord, I need that peace. I need that peace. What is robbing me of that peace? Is it the things I'm doing? Is it the friends I'm keeping? The company I'm keeping? Or what is it? Or is it the enemy that's causing me to think this way? If you feel you have no peace, why have you no peace? Speak to yourself. Rise up, my soul, and praise the Lord. Let your peace come upon me, God. Let your peace come upon me now. Let me experience your peace. Nothing shall steal my peace. Don't allow anyone to steal your peace. Don't allow members of your family to steal your peace. Don't allow your teacher to steal your peace. Don't allow your wife or your husband to steal your peace. Your peace is very important. Because if you haven't peace inside, you can't transfer peace to other people. You can't give peace if you haven't got peace yourself. You can't say peace be to this house if you haven't peace inside you. No, you can't. Praise the Lord. Um, so he has personalized that one and he has personalized Romans 5 verse 6. When you were utterly with no way of escape, Christ came and died for you when you had no use for him. He had no way of escape, but Jesus made a way where there was no way. He made a way where there was no way. He forgave you all your sins. He took it upon himself. Wounded for you. Scourge, crowned for you. And you rose again to give you a new life. Praise God. Praise God. God showed his great love for you by sending Christ to die while you, you were still a sinner. That's Romans 5 verse 8. Now God has declared you not guilty. Now he will save you from all wrath to come. Uh, put up Romans. That's Romans Five verse nine. Just put that up till we actually see it with our eyes. Romans five verse nine. Much more than having now been justified by his blood. Justified means just as if you had never sinned. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Praise God. We're saved from wrath. The wrath of God. We are saved from wrath. Praise the Lord. And we are saved from the wrath of the enemy because we know who we are in Christ. And what did Jesus do when he was tempted? He used the word of God. He used the word. He said, it is written. It is written. So we have to get familiar with the word of God that when we are, we are, we are, we are um, tormented by the evil one, and that we can use the word of God, you know. And we can speak it out of our mouth, the word of God. Because when we know who we are, we can speak it. 
Uh, now you can rejoice in your wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what your Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for your sins, making you a friend of God. So we are a friend of God. God is not mad at you. When I was growing up as a child, you know, I always thought God was mad at me for doing things. Even though we were we're told that he loved us very much. But it was a fearful thing for a child because we didn't understand. We didn't understand about, about being born again. We didn't understand. God says, I will do well in you and walk in you. And I will be your God and you shall be my child. Now, isn't that a lovely scripture to know? Isn't that a lovely? God says, I will do well in you and walk in you and I will be your God and you shall be my child. Didn't you feel very secure when you were a child, when you know your mother was near and your father was near? You had great confidence. When you went outside, you know that if you were missing for five minutes to be out peeping, where is she? Where are you? you know, looking, looking out for you. Because you felt secure, the security of your parents, the security of your home. That's how it is with God. He wants us to feel secure. We are his child and that he's looking after us. He's looking after us every day. He will be our God and he dwells in you. Praise his holy name. And he promises in Hebrews 13 verse 5, I will never leave you or forsake you. He doesn't say, well, I won't be there Monday now. And I'm very busy on Saturday. No, he says, I will be with you always. Because he's God. But our human minds can't understand that because we can only cope with so many things in an hour. And on our diary, hour by hour, we have the people that are coming in and we're crossing them off. All because But in God, there is no time. you know. So he can deal with everyone's problems at the same time. Because he's God. Because he's God, don't put him on a human perspective, you know, that he's like us. Because he's God, he can do all things. He will never forsake you and he will never leave you. I will be a father unto you. I know how much these children think of their father here. I know how much you love him. And that's what God is saying, I'll be a father to you. I'll be a father. And that's lovely because you love your father. And he's telling I'll be a father. Even when your dad goes to be with the Lord, God will be your father. He will be your father. He's your father now. He will never cease to be your father. I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my child, says the Lord God Almighty. And whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2.21 to call upon the name of the Lord, that's an important scripture to show, to show to people who do not believe, that to call on the name of the Lord. That means you have confidence in him if you call on his name. I don't mean the people who curse and swear and call God's name in vain during the course of conversations and things like that. That's not what I'm talking about at all. That's abuse and that's, that's, that's terrible blasphemy calling on God's name in vain like that but uh, I'm saying when people sincerely call on God's name when they do not know how they ought to pray and they just say Jesus come help me come and very often when you hear testimonies that's the only prayer they prayed and he hears their cry and he comes and answers their prayer often with physical healing at the time or relief of pain or taking them out of a stressful situation or something like that and then they thought, oh, he did that. So they begin to think more and they say, well, they realize then their sinfulness and they hand over their lives. But he said, those who call on my name would be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The thief only looked over at him on the cross and said, you know, I know I have done wrong. You know? And he was saved. He was saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For if there is salvation in none other. For there is no other name under heaven given among people by which you can be saved. You cannot be saved by Buddha or any of these things. 
by statues or anything, by making novenas or all this. You cannot be saved in that way, it says. There is salvation in none other. For there is no other name under heaven given among people by which you can be saved. So it's very important we understand that. that no getting around it another way. There's only one way. Jesus is the bridge. He's the way to the Father. Jesus is the way to the Father. And that is something that needs to be preached and taught in this country. It's a, it's a one-liner. And the other one that I mentioned, you know, that, that come, come to me, all you that are heavenly laden and burdened. The invitation is there and the promise that they will have rest. You know, ask the Lord to inspire you with a scripture that you will use when you're speaking to people that you want desperately to come to know the Lord. Because it's God's will that all men be saved. He doesn't want any to perish, he said. He wants everyone to come to know him. Hell was made for the devil and his angels, not for humankind. You know, so why do we want humankind to go to hell? We don't. We want them all to be saved. He said, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. There shall be one fold and one shepherd. So we pray for those other sheep that are not of the fold. So that they will come into the fold. In the name of Jesus. Um, my prayer for you is that you may be as healthy and prosperous in every way as, as you are in your soul. Praise the Lord. That you will be in every way, in every way, spiritually, physically, emotionally, that you will be prosperous and you will be in health in every way. You know, he wants us to be whole. He wants us to be whole. He doesn't want anything to be wrong with us. He wants us to be alive and, and zealous for him and zealous for bringing people into the kingdom. Zealous, zealous that we will live, live the life that he wants us to live and obey all his commandments. Disobedience is something that he, he frowns on. He doesn't want us to be disobedient. Obey his word. Obey. Do what he tells you to do. Do what he tells you to do. Don't delay. Don't delay. Be obedient. Always be ready for action like a good soldier is. A good soldier is always ready for call. You know, even, even when they're off duty, they can be called to emergencies. So they're always ready. They're always ready. They don't have to look for their uniform. They know where it is. Because they are good soldiers. They're a good squad. They want to do what's pleasing. You know, and they have to answer to all the different ranks. So they, want to, they don't want to have anything against their record. They want to come out as good soldiers. And they've done a good job. We want to fight the good fight. We want to do a good job. We want to be good soldiers. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Um, my prayer for you is that you may be healthy and prosperous in every way as you, you are in your soul. There is no condemnation. That means there's no judgment or there's no penalty awaiting those who belong to Christ Jesus. So there's no judgment awaiting you and there's no penalty. So you know that if you died right now, you be go to be with God. Isn't that such a relief? Because he's gone before you. He said he went before you to prepare a place for you. And if there's a place prepared for you, I can't go to your place. So there's a place prepared for all of us. That's how special we are. That's how special we are. He's prepared a place for us. Don't you feel very special tonight? I feel very special tonight. He has prepared a place for me. For me. That's why, that even if we were the only one that he created, you know, he would have died for us so that we could be with him. This is why he, he sent us, he, you know, we're the objects of his love. You know, he sent us to know him. To love him. To serve him. And to be happy with him for eternity in heaven. To be happy with him. So we should be looking forward to our next dimension. We should be looking forward. We're not fearful of it. 
And when we have given our life over to Jesus and repented of our sins and lived the good life every day and make sure that we repent every night and that we're pure before him, uh, we should have no fear. We should have no fear the next we should have no fear. We should be joyfully awaiting what he says. You know, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it begun to enter into our hearts the things he has prepared for those who love him. It hasn't even begun to enter in our hearts. That's how great it is. That's how wonderful it is. You know, it's not like down here. You know, we've just a faint glimmer of what it might be like. But... Um, if you read Revelations, you can go into more and more detail about heaven, you know, and streets of gold and all these things. But the seeing of, of, of Jesus in heaven is the greatest of all. The greatest of all to see him in heaven and to be greeted by him. Praise his holy name and to know that that's our home forever in Jesus' name. So wouldn't you want your loved ones, your cousins, your aunties, your grandmas, wouldn't you want them all to know Jesus? to be with you there. And if you go before them, you can greet them when they come, vice versa, vice versa, you know? And you will have a glorified body. You won't be missing teeth or anything like that, like we are down here. <laughs> you know, because we, 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 we will be a glorious body, you know? And we will recognize each other. Scripture said we will recognize each other. So praise the Lord. I'm looking forward. I don't know when my time is, but um, I, I, you know, don't be crying when I'm gone. Don't be crying. <laughs> Laugh and rejoice. She's up there. She's having a great time. You know, praise the Lord. I don't want any of you to cry. Praise the Lord. Um, there is no condemnation, as I said, no judgment, no penalty awaiting you when you belong to Jesus. Christ was without sin, but for your sake, God made him share your sin in order that you, in union with him, might share the righteousness of God. Ooh, we're sharing the righteousness of God. God is holy, God is right. We are sharing the righteousness of God. Wow, wow. That is 2 uh, Corinthians, I think it is 521. Uh, the righteousness of God. Now, when sin has once been forever forgiven and forgotten, there is no need to offer more sacrifices to get rid of them. You see, from the Old Testament, you know, we read about sacrifices and that. He, he was the eternal sacrifice. No need for any more sacrifices. He said, it is finished. It is completed. It is done. No need for other sacrifices. It's completed. He, he completed it on the cross. It is finished, he said. It is finished. No more sacrifices to get rid of, of, of these things. No more, no more, more. You shall, um, who shall separate you from the love of Christ? We better put up that one. Put up um, Romans 8.35, please. So when you have God's son in your life, you have a life. You have a life. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? No. Go to the next verse, please. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we yeah. are more than conquerors. You're not just a conqueror. Through him who loved you, you're more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. If soldiers knew that when they'd be going to out to other countries, that they're more than a conqueror. That's in the natural. So in the spiritual realm, we are more than a conqueror. More. We couldn't have been given any more. We couldn't. He has loaded us with benefits. Loaded us and loaded us and loaded us. I'm going to leave it at that. We can go on, but I think we, we'll just leave it at that for tonight. And um, 
it's really a thanksgiving night to, to refresh us on who we are in Christ Jesus, to thank God for who we are in Christ Jesus and what he has given us and the authority and the power that he has given us and that he has set us free and he wants us to be prosperous and he wants us to be in health. It's everything good in store for us. He has everything good. He wants us to live forever with him, to live forever with him, to enjoy the bliss of heaven. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. And at this stage, we probably, uh, before we start, we probably have questions and uh, maybe you've heard something for the first time or it's new to you or you're not so sure about it. Um, you can come up and, and ask questions or and the Holy Spirit will answer all of them. Okay, anyone with questions? Any comments? It's all crystal clear, so. Well, thank you, Holy Spirit. You spoke with clarity tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the cross, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus that has set us free. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your shed blood. Thank you that every evil passes over because of your shed blood. Thank you that we are more than conquerors through you that loves us. We are the seed of Abraham. We are heirs with your father. We are joint heirs with your son, Jesus. Greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. Thank you that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit dwells in us. Thank you that we are more than conquerors. Thank you that you've lavished your love upon us. Praise you, Lord. Thank you that you no longer hold our sins against us. Lord, you have set us free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that there is no other. You are the way. You are the truth. And you are the life. Thank you for your resurrection power in us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you go before us. That you're the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That we are never alone. That we are secure in you. We are deeply loved, fully forgiven, totally acceptable, and fully pleasing to you. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you that we are the righteousness of Christ. We are the righteousness of Christ. Thank you that every evil passes over because of the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Koriyamba la Kuria for setting us free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rala da Bashala da Bakuria. Oh, Yamba la Kuria, Shanda la Kuria. Oh, Soliamba la Kuria, Sonda la Kuria. Oh, Soliamba la Kuria. Oh, Bosonda la Kia. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise you, Lord. Lord, we lift up all those that are sick tonight. Those that are in hospital or in home sick, Lord. Those who are physically sick, spiritually sick, or emotionally sick, Lord. We ask for your touch tonight. Lord, touch them. Jesus, you touched those that were sick. You touched them and made them whole, Lord. We're asking for you to touch them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That their healing be manifest, Lord. Whether it be physical, emotional, or spiritual, Lord. To touch them and heal them from their pain. Father, in Jesus' name, by your stripes they are healed. By your blood they are set free. Set them free from all their infirmities in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we pray for more and more grace from you. Lord, you teach us how to how to bring the good news to others. Teach us, Lord. Skill us. That we will be powerfully skilled, Lord. You have given us all the equipment, Lord. You have given us your word, Lord. You have given us your promise. Thank you, Lord. Lord, show us the people that you want us to speak to. Lord, we, we don't know sometimes, Lord. And we can, can get confused, Lord. Give us clarity, Lord. Every day of who we shall speak to, Lord. In your name. Lord, that it will be the right timing. In the name of Jesus. That it will be the right timing. That we will have a word in every season for them. In the name of Jesus. 
You're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to know you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, convict this nation of sin and death and righteousness and eternal judgment. Conviction, Lord. We pray a hunger and thirst for your righteousness to come upon our nation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we break every spirit of prize and we bind it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of self-centeredness, we bind in the name of Jesus. We set people free in the name of Jesus. We set them free in Jesus' name. Every proud spirit be bound in Jesus' name. Cause a hunger and thirst to come upon our nation for righteousness, Lord. Draw them to the living waters, Father. We ask in Jesus' name. Draw them to the springs of salvation in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus. And we set them free from their blindness. Their spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus. Name above every other name. Name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Whoever has the Son has life in Jesus' name. Or who shall separate us from the love of Christ? In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.